Alright guys, so I'm downtown here in Hibbing because the roads are a mess and there's nowhere else for me to park right now, so I apologize for the extra noise. But first off, I wanted to say thank you to, uh, to those of you who watched yesterday's rambling episode. And uh, they uh, had some really good feedback as far as um, what I had to say about creativity and, and using that and, and the idea of getting those ideas out so that new ones can take their place. So I'm glad that was uh, well received. It's something I think about a lot is the idea of creativity, inspiration, and all of that when it comes to photography and, and how I can keep moving forward and getting better in that respect. So that's the first thing. Number two, today is Wednesday, uh, November 23rd. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving Day here in the US. So I know most of you are gonna see this either overnight, um, or tomorrow morning so I wanted to just take a second and wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving I hope that you guys spend some time with family and really appreciate and are thankful for the time you have with family because as we've talked about life is too short and you never know when you know it could be a last Thanksgiving or the last time you see a loved one or something like that so make sure enjoy that family time tomorrow and my advice to everyone is always eat too much good food enjoy a lot of laughter and good times with their family and just relax and have fun with it so today's uh, topic I want to talk about as far as the photography end of things I, I wanted to change it up a little bit and I had received a question a little while ago I was holding on to this for uh, a larger Facebook live Q&A but I've decided to go ahead and do it uh, right here as far as just diving into this one question and at least touching on the surface of it Again, my apologies if you can't hear me very well, but we should be all right. So um, the question I got is from Sid over at Shutter Time. She sent me this a while back. Um, she sent me a couple good ones, but I want to just touch on this one. She asked me, um, do you research your subjects before you go shooting, such as location, lighting, weather, etc., or do you walk and or drive and hope for the best? And then to tie on to that, if it's a wildlife related subject, so say I'm out photographing you know, wildlife or deer or anything else, do I take the time to learn the basic biology specific to the species I'm targeting? And really excellent question and a really big question. You know, to answer the first part about, you know, do I research my subjects? Now, it, it really depends on if I'm shooting here, my local area or hometown, because if I'm shooting locally here or even up, you know, north in the woods or things like that, I don't really do a lot of research. Uh, main reason being that I'm, I've lived here my whole life, I've been born and raised here, and I'm very familiar with this area. And so if I want to go take a specific type of picture or I want to shoot a certain type of photograph, I generally have a good idea of where I can find um, the types of topics and subjects that I'm, I'm looking for to make the pictures I want. That being said, you know, I think the only research I do when it comes to searching for um, specific lighting or weather conditions is just kind of, you know, sometimes writing down in a notebook, but most often I just got a, a little file in the old noggin here and um, know that, you know, in certain lighting or times of day or weather conditions or maybe certain times of year that there is, you know, certain places I like to try and go hit because I'm, um, you know, have been waiting for certain light on a scene, for example. And so I don't do a lot of research when it comes to that kind of stuff. Now, where I will do some research and, and, and um, a bit of scouting, for example, is if I'm being commissioned to, to do some portrait work or weddings or things like that, and I absolutely enjoy going ahead of time to scout out a wedding location or venue so I know what I'm dealing with in terms of lighting, um, in terms of the logistics of things, and, and that I find extremely valuable. So in those situations, I will, even if it's local. For the most part, that's about the extent of my research. Now, that really changes if I'm going to go travel somewhere, you know, that, that's even an hour away or something like that, where I will take the time to, to use, you know, either Google Image Search or, you know, any of the online resources, Instagram. I've reached out a number of times to photographer friends in, in other places that I'm going to be going to for any good recommendations or tips or places to look for that maybe are really good locations but they're not the the typical you know tourist locations they're more uh, off the beaten path and, and in those cases I do like to do a little research as far as you know what's out there 
what are some of the, the opportunities I might have for a plan of attack on at least a, a handful of images where I feel good about them and um, where I can walk away from it feeling like even even if uh, that truck just totally splashed me with slush. Anyways, but I can, I can walk away from it if I make the, the trip down there even an hour away, two hours away, something like that. I know I'm going to walk away with a handful of images in my pocket that I'm going to enjoy and, and hopefully be able to you know, convert from an idea into a finished product. But um, I always like to leave a little bit of room to just explore. Um, as far as hoping for the best, I guess it's a little bit of that, but I, I like to think of it more as having a general outline of some things that I'd like, that I'd like to do, and then staying open to any other possibilities so I'm not so pigeonholed focused on a specific shot or a specific theme. So it really just depends on what I'm doing. Now, when it comes to wildlife, I don't shoot a ton of it uh, from the viewpoint of making a trip out into the woods and sitting in a blind or something like that just to photograph wildlife. Most wildlife photography that I do will be either in the fall when I'm taking pictures of deer I've got a few go-to areas that I'll go to with some big fields and things where I know there's a real high likelihood I'm gonna see um, a lot of deer activity in these fields and then it's just a matter of driving and, and waiting till I see what I see it's it's not always the best approach but I'm not really a dedicated wildlife photographer um, I do enjoy it but I really just find for some reason I don't have the patience to to go out and sit in a blind in, in a location and just wait for hours and hours to get you know wildlife photos. Um, it's something I think about doing often at times but I just never quite get around to it. So um, as far as the biology of it I think it comes back to again you know I, I was raised as an outdoors family. Um, a family of hunters, fishermen, etc. And where we live it's a very small community surrounded by a lot of woodland and forest. And so when it comes to the biology, I, I generally have been raised to know the, the critters and animals around here pretty well. Um, you you kind of know their behaviors, you know what signs you're looking for, if you're looking for you know, any markings or things in the woods where you can kind of say, okay, I, I'm seeing a lot of sign of this here, so there's a good likelihood that if I was to be in this area, the animals are doing this or that. So. Um, I guess to answer that, yes, I, I have done a lot of research, not intentionally because it was just how I was raised and it's a lifetime of learning about um, the wildlife in this area. Um, I think if I was to go, say, like on an African safari or something and, and you know, try and get photographs of lions or whatever it might be, absolutely I'd want to learn about their behaviors, their mannerisms, um, and things like that, so I, I knew what I was looking at when I was seeing them. Um, it's a it's more of a curiosity than than anything else, but I, I like to know a little bit about the the wildlife or the animal that I'm shooting. I think that person was wondering what I was doing, so oh well. Um, but you know, as far as any wildlife here locally, uh, it's just a lifetime of learning, a lifetime of continued pursuit of you know trying to be a better outdoorsman and have a better respect for the wildlife and the natural habitat around me so it's a it's a pretty big question but I'm gonna get going I'm really hoping that all this traffic wasn't too noisy for you guys I'm hoping you could hear me at least some um, my apologies if it ended up being kind of a yucky audio day as far as the the podcast or the uh, video show here but um, just they're cleaning roads and if everything is sloppy after the snow last night it's still coming down a little now so really really limited and I just didn't want to sit at a desk and, and talk to the camera in my in my office at home so you guys take care have an excellent Thanksgiving like I said um, give those loved ones um, all of your attention spend time you know laughing and having a good time eating some good food and just being with each other and I will talk to you guys tomorrow
Did I smile good enough? <laughs>